I'm Ed Egan, I'm from Hawken Audio, uh, and I have some colleagues with me. Uh, we have Rob Schwimmer, who is going to be performing on the Continuum and on the new Expressive E Osmos. Um, in front of me, I have uh, a new product that we are just introducing here at Superbooth, which is the Egan Matrix um, module, Eurorack module. And also we have, uh, helping us to monitor, we have products from Le Voix de Luthier and we have Christophe Duquesne here to help us uh, and explain some of the, the, what makes these things special. Uh, we're using them for our monitoring here and, and if you come by our booth, uh, we're over in the bungalow area. Um, if you look at Dieter's booth and then just do a 180, you'll uh, see us right behind Expressive E and you can come in and, and uh, try some of these instruments for yourself and also experience the wonderful sonic qualities of uh, the Omd and the Pyramid. So uh, as I mentioned in front of me, we have the, I have here this Eurorack case, which has our new Egan Matrix module. I'm gonna be running this in combination with this Arteria Keystep, other control voltages, and also the mini. I'll go in a little bit more depth uh, when we uh, get to that section. But um, over here, we have the Continuum and the Osmos. Uh, the Continuum is, is our, uh, really the uh, love of the company. It's the thing that we really, uh, I, I wouldn't say we're most proud of, we're proud of all these things, but it's, it really was the reason that Hawk and Audio came to be, that the idea that you could have truly expressive um, and uh, intimately controllable uh, um, uh, music synthesizers. And you know, there is just this wonderful ability that was unfortunately, it's very hard to achieve in electronics where you have this human feedback loop that is very, very immediate, that happens at the same way, that same way that a violin player and they, and they play their instrument and they listen to the tone and they it's subconsciously they're adjusting minute variations in their finger pressure. And what that does for them is adjust the sound in real time. And that's the goal uh, that we've had with the continued fingerboard. And s a player that has an incredible uh, feedback and haptic abilities would be Rob Schwimmer. And I'll bring Rob Schwimmer out now. And he's going to just run through a few of our continuum presets. He'll be playing the half size slim continuum. We also have, we call it an S46. There's also a larger one, which has 70 half, half steps and it's called the S70. So why don't you take it away, Rob, if you want, want me to introduce any of these? Uh, this is a s based on a sound that you made. It's very short, the winter's skipping. Okay. Yeah, so it's, well, the, the, what, what's interesting is that every finger um, that you play can have its independent delay loops. So consequently, when you play, you can, you can also get independent loops, but you can also subtly cross-relate them. And, and because the way feedback works within the system, uh, you can adjust your finger pressure to sort of control and ride the wave of, of that sort of thing. So take it away. What was that second one? Well, that was your point of the setup. 
Okay, so, the, yeah. Uh, it, go ahead, go ahead. Hello. Okay, so towards me, the surface is doing this kind of very wiry sound, but as I move, uh, you can hear change as opposed to. So the character is very different. So it's like you have uh, a duet from here to there. So that's pretty cool. And if you couldn't see Rob's fingers, because that overhead is over on this Euro rack, what he's doing is playing whether on the front or the back, because it's a three-dimensional surface. Uh, I'll do uh, one or two really quick service things. So yeah, tell me what it is, and I'll explain it quick. Uh, where is it? Eight, four, eight, nine, eight, eight. Okay, here's another one that changes with pedal. This is, this is uh, one um, called, well, I don't know what it was called originally, but uh, the pedal changes it from this kind of sine wavy thing into like a French horn sort of sound. So, so what Rob has done with a lot of these presets, he's used system presets and then modified them to his own uh, playing abilities and likes uh, through our uh, editor and uh, and with the engine. So. One of the, yeah, so this is a, a, a sound. We're using things called spectral sets. And you could think in a very abstract way that they're samples, but they're not really samples. They're analysis of a particular, um, this in fact is a D sharp from a viola, a single D sharp. And we're using uh, granular uh, techniques in order to uh, loop it and stretch it and form it, shift it. You can see how light you can play on it, I mean, how quiet it is. But conversely, uh, so if you're playing light and just leaning in, but you can also... So it's totally responsive. Or slow, fast. So it does, does exactly what you do. So if it sounds good, it's because you sound good. If it sounds bad, it's because you play bad. That, that's good, <laughs> because you're bad, yeah. Um, okay, so Rob, we have to move on. Uh, he's, this guy's an amazing player. Um, but now uh, I want to have Christophe de King come up and from Le Bois de Louvier and uh, sort of explain the basic principle in just a couple of minutes of um, uh, how this company came about and what makes these uh, wooden resonators so special. Take it. <laughs> okay, uh, hello. Uh, so yeah, you have, one pyramid here and one on here from La Voix de Luthier, and they are both resonators, meaning that there is no speakers inside. What you're hearing from them is only the wood, vibration of the wood. They are built with traditional Luthier's techniques uh, like you use on guitar or, or, or a piano. Uh, and they spread the sound all over, unlike speaker uh, that are very directive, and they, they have their, uh, their own colors too. Uh, ju just a small thing, and why we came up building this, this kind of devices, 
we are all in here in, in physical modeling world uh, and same thing with expressive maybe you've checked also that and you imagine stuff and when you go with physical modeling if you end up on speakers it doesn't sound like an acoustic instrument and if you end up on wood then you really get something quite close very very close to an acoustic instrument so that's what we wanted to do uh, of course, that's something you need to experiment, so please come to the booth uh, on, on the video, it will be more difficult. But uh, an, anyway, and, and uh, just two more things. Uh, on, on this uh, pyramid, you have a small pyramidion, metallic, handmade one uh, on, on the top. Everything is handmade from, from La Voix du Vitier. So we're doing this new pyramidion, and this uh, only is a black finish one. So that means what we, we can do customization so if you have some specific wish on, on the finish or on, on wh whatever ju just contact us and we will be happy to to do this and uh, i'll leave the floor to ed and, and rob merci beaucoup um so uh, we're, we're running short of time i want to get on to our ego matrix module here um so what you've heard um you haven't heard the mini but, uh you've heard um, the continuum and uh, we also have on stage the Osmos, um, and now this Egan Matrix module, and what they have all in common is our Egan Matrix sound engine. Um, in fact, they're so common that um, if you were to edit a sound on a mini, you could load it and play it on an Osmos, you could load it and play it on a continuum, and you can load it and play it on the Egan Matrix. Now, the difference between them, all of them is the interfaces is different. So since we're so much interested in performance interface, we have a very, very flexible sound engine that allows us to custom tailor um, things so that the, they're optimized for the particular uh, input system that you're, you have it map mapped to. So in the, the engine that we have is quite expansive. We have all sorts of things. This is a, in, for an Egan matrix in a Eurorack format, you can think of it as just like a whole bag of modules that can be all sorts of things. So it could be anywhere from a simple VCA, it could be a filter, it could be a delay, it could be combinations of things, it could be reverbs, it can be a polyphonic keyboard, it can be an MPE keyboard, it can take control voltages and convert it into con uh, performance. Um, uh, and so what I want to do is just show you a few things. So, so the first one here is just an example of taking some of the controls out, and I have this drone, so it's a whole generative uh, dual uh, pitch system with delay, uh, but you can control the parameters in real time. an aspect of it, just using it as a generative system on itself that you can post-process and, and uh, interact with in real time. I'm going to move ahead to another one where I've, I've connected a key step uh, to the MIDI input. So this module has MIDI um, through the um, TRS connections, MIDI in and out. It also has USB MIDI. It has uh, control uh, voltages for your performance data from, uh, from uh, things like the Continuum Mini. It also has uh, control voltage control for macros that you can set up. We call them bespoke controllers. And it also has audio input and output, so you can use it as a processor. Um, it also has a line level switch, so if you're not into Eurorack, you can have a standalone case and use it as a module and, and, and treat it as an MP uh, music creation device. So I'm going to play. So this is showing, even though it's an MPE system, you can take a mono-channel keyboard like the Keystep. And, 
And I have now an eight voice polyphonic synthesizer. demonstration I'm going to do a similar thing with a different preset but now what I'm going to do is use the capabilities of multi MIDI strings that we can do in the Egan matrix module and I'm gonna, I can uh, control voice from uh, MIDI uh, this particular sound and also parameters from uh, control voltage and and the, the the engine is smart enough to map these out and figure out one of them needs to be channelized into MPE and the other one is a solo voice so I can take advantage of the the key bed that I have on the key step and the continuous surface I have in the on the continuum So I had more uh, sounds to demonstrate for you, but we're running out of time. We're going to go to a last piece that we had prepared. Um, if you want to explore more of this uh, Egan Matrix, please come by our booth. We're, you know, opposite Dieter, so, uh, and, uh, and we'd love to spend time with you and show you some of the more, thing, more of the things that it can do. So I'll just need to get set up for this next piece.
Thanks. Thanks so much. Again, so happy to be here and, and seeing some smiling, wonderful faces again. So please give us a, a visit over at the booth and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. <laughs> 